Okay. Well, I uh, wrote this essay with uh, a colleague and friend, Carla Peralta, also a former student of the Anna Freud Center. We wrote this essay uh, for the Peruvian Psychoanalytic uh, Society conference that was held last, last year. Please feel free to interrupt me if you don't understand a word or something, because I haven't spoken in English since the MSc. So. <laughs> Costs and emotions that imprison the mind. A few years ago, we implemented a toddler group following the model proposed by the Anna Freud Center at a, wom at a women's prison in Lima. We believe this work is important because of the particular context in which the inmates and their children live within the prison. Many of the children are born at the prison and must be then placed with the family members or in less favorable cases with a government institution at the age of three. Um, actually, last year uh, I met one of the mothers that was in my group in a Christmas activity and she told me that she decided to have her second, her second child when she heard her sentence, a 30 years sentence, no? and that's when she decided to have another child in the prison. Social workers supervised the process, but we were surprised to find that a specific psychological space does not exist in which to guide these mothers and their children through this forced separation before and after it occurs. We also discovered that the mothers of children who were about to turn three constantly complained that they had not been informed about the process and did not know the exact day when their child would, ha would leave the prison. This void led us to think about the importance given by the institution to caring for the minds of these mothers and children and the consider consideration they give to each person's subjective experience. This is especially important considering the crimes committed by the nine mothers that made up our group, homicide, terrorism, kidnapping and drug trafficking, and the past they have survived, which also condemned them from a young age, sexual, physical and psychological abuse abandonment, negligence, etc. Their destructuring life stories not only remained in an emotionless, emotionless discourse, but were often acted out in their relationship with their children. Carrying out the toddler group within the prison was not an easy task. And from the beginning, we noticed that the institution had difficulty understanding the group's purpose. Therefore, the mothers were forced to go to our sessions just as they were forced to go to their drawing, painting, and craft workshops in order to obtain points and certain benefits for good behavior. However, our instructions were the opposite. Only those who wanted to should come to the sessions. After we had already explained our approach like several times, it was even suggested that we take attendance so we could then report who did not attend. We believed absences could be initially have many meanings, distrust and fear of new relationships or the presence of negative transference, but it could also be understood as what it was, simply the desire not to, be, to not be there, to not be part of the group. In the end, these were the few moments in which they had the opportunity to express their will. Acceptance of their initial absences and tardiness, recognizing their need to rebel against obligations, was important within the process because it made it possible for these mothers to get gradually closer to the group without fear of being dominated and absorbed by it. It was therapeutic even for the mothers who did establish a positive transference from the start. This transference, in many cases, was motivated by their desire to please and to distinguish themselves from the group of irresponsible mothers. We would often hear them say, they're not coming. If she's going to be late, she should not come at all. I could also be looking over my case with a lawyer. She has no shame. She just drops her kid off and leaves. And poor kids. These constant complaints, loaded with feelings of anger and frustration, expressed the, the envy that arose from seeing their own wishes carried out by others. Later, some of the mothers allowed themselves to share these wishes and others to carry them out. One woman dreamed of hiring someone to care for her child, while another wished her family could spend more time with her daughter, and looked for excuses for this to happen. 
Other mothers disappeared from the group, leaving their children abandoned in the space without warning and showing that they could also feel like prisoners of their own children. At the same time, we also understood these attacks to be the only way they found to de defend themselves from their own early experiences of abandonment, the demands of an unresolved infantile dependence, since many of them spoke of having indifferent and abandoning mothers. No, they were like trying to, to deal defensively with the separation from their children as well. In this way, we can see how the group caused complementary reactions, with some mothers taking on the role of the aggressor by not attending the sessions or leaving their children at the space, and others putting the sel themselves in the role of victim and resenting the maternal absence. These roles fluctuated back and forth between the mothers in the group and seemed to be part of a plot that was already developing within it, which was hard for us to make out at first, but appeared to be shared by all of the mothers, by all of the mothers. In it, the group was unconsciously being felt like a mother who could invade or abandon them. This image was silently created through the projections of their own emotions and fantasies regarding their earliest experiences. This led us to recall Fogel, who states that initially in th therapeutic groups, early psychologically, psychological functioning is recreated, similar to the period where communication between mother and baby is primarily through the body and the sensations and emotions this causes in the baby lay the foundations for the baby self. The author relies on Glasser's nuclear complex to explain the dynamic that occurs in this period. On the one hand, the baby has an intense desire to fuse with the mother. However, this profound closeness also causes anxiety and fear of being lost in the relationship, and separation as an alternative to this dilemma causes a great fear of feeling completely abandoned by her. From this perspective, we began to understand the way the mothers related to the space, why they were suddenly invaded by their pressing need to leave it, given the impression of feeling asphyxiated within it, and on the other hand, why some mothers became anxious, imagining us not being there. We soon discovered that, they were, that the way they related to the group revealed the way they perceived their own mothers, where closeness and separation from the mother figure now felt in the group were experienced as a powerful threat to their identity. We asked ourselves, how can we make the group not be perceived as a source of persecution? That is, how can we get them to connect with their more fragile sides without their being overshadowed and taken over by aggression? The initial group dynamic allowed us to reflect on our own experience working at the jail where we found that our own ambivalent feelings fluctuated between the need for support and protection from the institution and the fear of being perceived as an extension of it. We remember how difficult it was to find a specific place to work with the mothers and to establish a schedule, and once these issues had been resolved, how hard they were to keep from week to week. Because other activities would be set up in our assigned space or time, or we would be surprised with unexpected visits when the session had already started. Situations like these caused feelings of anger and frustration that led us to seek out the prison's authorities on many occasions to understand what was going on, but also to establish alliances that would bring back the security and support needed to keep the program going. However, establishing clear limits and agreements within the jail was very difficult with an institution that felt all-powerful and ever-present. The prison's characteristics such as restrictions on movement, physical and psychological overcrowding, and relations of power intrinsically seek to watch over and control. Within the jail, there were situations where even the most private things felt invaded. The mothers will tell us how even at night they felt the guards watching them as they slept. They walk on tiptoes. They think we don't know they are there, but we have caught them a few times. It's funny, they jump back like cats. In this way, we see the jail trying to invade even their dreams, not allowing even their deepest thoughts and feelings to freely circulate. We could also identify with these feelings, 
since we felt not only spied on, but also attacked. On several occasions, the guards approached us, asking for us to lend them toys. After explaining that it was not possible, we were surprised <coughs> to find that a few weeks later, the key to the room where the toys were stored had been lost, and this happened repeatedly from then on. Seeing the mothers receiving things from the program provoked feelings of rivalry and envy in the guards by connecting them with their own priva privations. Their actions seemed to say, if there are no toys for us, there are no toys for anyone. Also, they expressed the need to control the mental states that arose within the space in a concrete way, emotions, desires, fantasies, and thoughts that were contained in the toys in some way. We thought that in the same way, they did not let the inmates dream. They did not want to let us play. This led, this led us to consider how hard it would be to create the necessary conditions for the group to begin to think. If we consider the first months of a group to be comparable to the development of a newborn baby, as proposed by Fogel, a period where the experience of the mother's body and the quality of her support will determine how the baby integrates its experience Likewise, the group's physical attributes, that is, its space, limits, and setting, will provoke sensations and emotions that will influence the way the group is perceived. Fogel says that because there is no past to sustain the continuity of the group, its beginning is a vulner vulnerable period where the sensory perceptions of the groups, here and now, take on a pronounced importance. Therefore, it is important to maintain consistency and emotional containment in the setting in order to calm the anxieties that are transferred to it. Accordingly, we believe that the constant intrusions and premature changes in the group could irreparably impact the possibility of creation because the lack of a solid and stable setting would not allow whatever would be created within it to be supported and developed. This is fundamental considering the mother's extreme fragility due to their personal histories as well as the context in which they are situated, where their minds are not respected but, on the contrary, are continually attacked and pillaged. An example of this was the inspection that the inmates experienced that year. At the beginning of the session, one of the mothers approached us and told us very anxiously that the past weekend there had been a search. A group of police, um, a group of police had unexpectedly and violently entered all of the prison wards to search their belongings. She said that they suddenly appeared in our rooms, yelling and pushing us violently. They searched through our things and knocked them over in front of the children. On top of that, my son was sneezing all night and his nose bleed because of the dust that flew everywhere. I also had to change his clothes a few times because he started to sweat a lot. He only wanted me to carry him. Another mother approached us and told us angrily that her daughter was repeatedly wetting herself and having nightmares. The girl dreamed that she would call her mother, but she would not come. The mother was confused by this behavior, and she did not understand why her daughter needed to hold her hand to be able to go back to sleep. She said, Miss, I don't understand. She wants me to carry her all day. I'm tired. And the other day, I found my daughter and another girl knocking over everything in my cell. That's when I lost my, my patience and yelled at them and threw, and threw them out. We saw that while her daughter, no, yes. We saw that while her daughter tried to recreate what happened, what had happened through a game in order to gain more control over her experience, the mother experienced her game as a real threat and defended herself from it by also identifying with the police and aggressively throwing the girls out. As proposed by Fonagy, we understand the mother's attack on her daughter's game as a way to neutralize the psychological experience the search had provoked in her, which she could not tolerate, also neutralizing her daughter's thoughts and creative capacity. This way, the message the child received from her mother, which she may have also received as a young child is that when there is tension, it is better not to think. As with these mothers, we noticed that many others had serious difficulties <coughs> remembering experiences, listening to and caring for their children, and recognizing their own feelings, and exhibited regressive conduct as, these, as did their children. 
The search was felt like a violation of their bodies and minds. For some of them, this situation revived the memory of being abused and hurt by the police when they were arrested, and therefore connected them with the vulnerab vulnerability of their own bodies, where physical boundaries feel relaxed and there is no protective membra membrane that can sustain them. We noticed that after the search, the mothers came to the session very bundled up or with very tight clothing. We al also noticed they were very verbose. Seeing their children bleed, sweat, and wet, and wet themselves suddenly and overwhelmingly connected them with their own anxieties over feeling their contents being empty. Therefore, we believe <coughs> they were somehow trying to <coughs> recreate the world, like relieving what Esther B. called a second skin that can contain and cover the different parts of the body and with it the sensations, emotions, and fantasies that are imprinted in it, on it. The sessions following the search felt very charged with tension, anxiety, and distrust. The group seemed divided, and each mother demanded individualized attention. It was hard for them to process what they had experienced as a group. However, they slowly began to see each other and unite based on a shared history, the search and differentiating themselves from the rest of the women in the prison because they had experienced this situation with their children. That way, the mothers began to pay attention to the other mothers' experiences and also turned into their, to, uh, yes, also tuned into their feelings and concerns, gradually forming a circle that felt like a protective cover. This could be clearly seen at snack time where their approach to the food and enjoyment in eating was coupled with the pleasure of feeling the warmth of company and in this way feeling embraced and sustained by the group. We believe that despite the prison's intrusions and instability, a group membrane became, began to develop, allowing at least for boundaries to be established between what happened inside and outside the group. This made it possible for the mothers to begin to make suggest suggestions that benefit the group like organizing to see who would clean and take care of the space, and deciding who would prepare the children's meals every day. Also, they began to act more attentive and connected to their children's demands, enjoying their games and funny remarks, as if, as if they had internalized the role of caring that now allowed them to sustain their children. At the end of the program, after one year, we said goodbye with a Christmas gathering where the mothers gave us a map with the word freedom. We think, we think this object reflects how the mothers perceived the program as a space where freedom to act, feel, and think was the rule. We found it interesting that they themselves created a symbol based on the experience they shared with the group. In the map, we saw a container held by others, us, that allowed the mothers to, taste, allowed the mothers to taste the freedom to differentiate themselves and create their own space in which, in which they could begin to assimilate the contents of their inner world. Based on this experience at the prison, we see how this institution gives rise to emotions and fantasies that correspond to a state of total dependence on the mother. This may be caused by the fact that the prison can feel like a powerful and threatening mother, an image that echoes the mother fear they carry with them in their minds. The constant intrusions and attacks on the mother's minds, which we also felt in our program, do not allow differentiation and development of a mental space, imprisoning them in a model of relationship that, that's not, that, that does not promote growth and change to more symbolic thinking. Thank you. Feel free to comment, questions. Caroline, what happened to the mothers when the, after the children had to go out of the hospital, out of the prison? Did you have them a group for them yeah. once the children weren't around? When they, they are allowed to stay in the prison with their mothers until they turn three. No? Then they go with a family member or in less favorable circumstances they go uh, to a government institution. 
no? And they have visits, no? They can they can go to visit their mother, no? And, and there was no therapeutic help for the mothers once no. the children left? No, they, they didn't know when their, their child will leave the prison, no? It, yeah, uh, turning three years old, uh, two weeks after or two weeks before turning three years old, they didn't know. During the, the sessions, no, they constantly uh, talk about that. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to help them not only with this uh, psychological separation, not taking into account the separation individuation phase uh, process, but also this uh, physical separation, no, this real physical se uh, physical separation. The children left, so the mothers and the children stayed together in this group that you were Yes, yes, the mothers, yes. Yes, following the, the Anna Freud model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did um, the uh, institutions sort of see the, the usefulness of the group like after the whole year, or did they come give you some type of feedback? Mm, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. It was very hard for them to understand the purpose of the group. No, they c could interrupt us in the middle of a session. No, they uh, once they interrupted us and uh, told us that they have these uh, two students that wanted to see the, to observe the session. No, but without uh, letting us know in advance. No, just in the middle of the session. No, these the, these students came. Mm -hmm. How, how have you managed to uh, persuade the people in charge for the areas to set up this group in the interpret? Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that's a good question no? because it, it, we have like, we had like two moments. No, uh, the thing is that first we introduced the program to um, how do you call it a head, the head of the of the prison, and uh, she was a really nice uh, person, no, and very enthusiastic about the program. And we talked to the mothers, no, and and we started like we, we decided we would start the program in one month, no, to 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 organize the things. But then during the the program, there was a change in the administration, and then we had difficulties uh, to keep with the program. We had to present the documents again, no. Yeah. So it was difficult for them mm -hmm. to understand. And every time we went to the to the prison, no, there was this guard that opened, no, as the this little window, no, and always asking the same, no, who are you, no, yes, and we are talking about the program, what program is that, no, and it, it was the same person that <laughs> opened. <laughs> yeah. It's like you lose your identity in <laughs> the jail. Give another five minutes. Uh, I mean, the pressure on you in terms of trying to maintain a space, literally mm -hmm. maintain a space, concretely maintain a space, and then having a space for thinking, mm -hmm. thought was huge. Mm -hmm. What sort of support did the two of you get mm -hmm. in doing that? I mean, it's, it, it sounds extremely demanding mm -hmm. and, and what was it like actually to do and what sort of support did you get mm -hmm. for yourselves mm -hmm. in, in, in uh, doing it? Mm -hmm. Well, we <laughs> what we did is after the each session, no, we went to a cafe no, and started talking, talking, <laughs> talking, talking. <laughs> we were verbose as well, <laughs> no, and because in Lima it's very difficult to find like a financial support no, uh, for these kind of programs, so we work pretty by ourselves. Gosh. Yeah. It's a lot to carry. Hmm. Speak up. I was thinking about the prison guards and mm -hmm. the emotional impact for them mm -hmm. on seeing these mothers bring children into the world in the prison and in relation to the comment about them keeping losing the toy uh, the keys for mm -hmm. the toys uh, that seemed a very cruel thing but actually for them to see children in a prison environment and, and their feelings about these women 
Mm -hmm. so just, uh, just thinking about the impact and then might be to shut down completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting what happens inside, no? I uh, remember uh, there was this, uh, this um, she, uh, he was part of the administration staff and he helped us with the, with the toys no, that we keep in this room. And once we saw a little girl that was like, uh, how you say, deambulating? The, like walking, no, with, with any control, not just by herself, no? And we told him, no? And he told us, no, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to do anything because then the mother is going to accuse me of pervert. No, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so it, it's, <laughs> it's a very difficult situation. Is this sort of program like that being run in the prison or what did you just do it for that year? Yes, for that year. Mm -hmm. And the work that you do now, is it, is it similar to that kind of work or is it more uh, sort of like a private? No, it's m now it's more like a private practice, but I would love to go uh, to keep like knocking doors <laughs> so maybe I can, can uh, uh, implement uh, another toddler group in the prison because I think it's very useful and the mothers really uh, and how do you say, evaluated? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the sounds of it, the mothers, never would, it would have been a, a new experience for them mm -hmm. for the first time ever, yeah. really. Yeah. 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 Uh, mm -hmm. They would never have had something like that in their lives, mm -hmm. really. So actually the response was really quite profound. Mm -hmm. to, to you, and especially at the end, mm -hmm. that they could hold on to mm -hmm. any sense of having had mm -hmm. uh, 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 the quality of, of thoughtfulness that uh, mm -hmm. you were providing. I was wondering if you are able to maintain that thinking space as you move to end, because I was just thinking about how difficult a time that would have been as, as the approach that the, their children would be mm -hmm. moving to outside the prison and mm -hmm. how you managed that. And they mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a lot of work to do in the prison, you know, to help the mothers uh, to, to, um, how do you say this, to, to leave this situation, you no? Know? There's a lot of work to do in the, in the prison, you no? Know? They are more focused on workshops, on how many points they can get, you know, for good behavior. But really, I, I think there's no uh, space think no, about what they are living, what they are experiencing. Mm -hmm. Not only, as you say, no, not only uh, during this process of, of real separation, but also afterwards. No? Mm. Excuse me, I, I can hear you. Initially, when you started the group, what was their reaction to you as an outsider coming in? <coughs> the ma from the, the reaction from the yeah. mothers, yeah, it was a, we have a different reactions, no? Uh, some mothers uh, were there from the beginning, and uh, we saw like there was there was like a positive transference, no? And some mothers uh, were worried, no? Uh, we all w always were there, uh, very punctual, no? But even though. There was there was like a couple of mothers that were all always anxious and worried that we wouldn't wouldn't come. No, uh, there were there were also mothers that wanted to leave their children. No, and go to do their things. No, to cook. No, I I have to go uh, to to turn off the 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 the, the kitchen, the oven. No, uh, and they just dropped their 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 kids. No, and we had to explain to set the limits again. Mm -hmm.